Hey y'all, this is the second time that I've recorded this video because the first time I got almost all the way through and then the camera died. Ugh. Okay, so objective. Today we're going to deal with rational and irrational numbers. And the whole point is we're going to classify, identify, and order rational and irrational. Maybe these words you've never heard before and if you haven't then that's fine. That's what I'm here to explain to you. In our world, we have real numbers and we have imaginary. Now, you don't really deal with imaginary, and you won't until later, like in high school math. So don't even worry about imaginary, but just know that there is such a thing as an imaginary number. We deal with the real number system, and within the real number system, there are two categories, rational and irrational. Rational numbers are the things that you've probably dealt with up until this point. Whole numbers, most decimals, and fractions. All whole numbers and all fractions are going to be rational. Decimals that are going to be rational are the decimals that either repeat or they just end, like 5.25 or negative 7.3 or negative 10.125. If it ends, like it has 2, 3, 4, 5, if it ends or it repeats, it is a rational number. Irrational numbers are the non-perfect squares because we've been dealing with perfect squares if it's a non-perfect square and you're taking the square root, then that is an irrational number. Also, if it's a decimal that doesn't repeat and it doesn't end, that means it goes on and on forever. So like 0 0.1234567891011121234 blah, blah 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 blah. That would be a non-repeating and a non-ending decimal, so that would be an irrational number. So make sure you get this chart, this classifying chart down. So you know which one falls into rational and what numbers fall into irrational. Some examples, identifying as rational and irrational. So I have four examples right here. The first one, negative five. Negative five is a whole number, and we know that if it's a whole number, it is going to be rational. Number two, square root of 18. The square root of 18, 18 is a non-perfect square. That's what I have written here, non-perfect. So if you're taking the square root of a non-perfect square, then that is going to be irrational. Because if you typed that in the calculator, you would get a decimal that doesn't repeat and it doesn't end. Negative one-half, it's a fraction. And as we know, any fraction, both positive and negative, is going to be rational. And then the last one is pi. I'm sure that your teachers have talked to you about pi. We haven't discussed pi x, we haven't done circles. But pi is 3.14 blah 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 forever and ever as we know it. So it is a non-ending, means it doesn't end, and it does not repeat. So it's non-terminating and non-repeating decimal, which makes it irrational. So I want you to try these. Identify as rational or irrational. I want you to try these, pause it, and then press play when you're ready to check your work. All right, the square root of 30. 30 is a non-perfect square, and because it's the square root of a non-perfect square, that means it's going to be irrational. Number six, negative 7.2. This bar notation means it repeats. And if it's a repeating decimal, that means it's classified as a rational number, rational number. Number seven, the square root of 100. 100 is a perfect square. The square root of 100 is 10, and 10 is a whole number, so that is rational. Irrational, rational, rational. All right. The next example, and that's an eight if you couldn't tell, <laughs> order from least to greatest. So I've got a collection of numbers, both rational and irrational, and I want you to order them from least to greatest. So let's start with zero, we know, negative two, we know, square root of five. We learned how to estimate non-perfect squares, and so this is going to be about two because it's close to four, and the square root of four is two. This is 13 over four, and I know that four will go into 13 three times, because four times three is 12, so I know this is about three. So I have zero, negative two, about two, and about three. So I want to order from least to greatest. My smallest one up here is negative two, and then my next one is going to be zero, 
And between these two, which one's going to come next? 2, so negative, I mean, square root of 5, and then 13 over 4. So those are my numbers labeled. Now notice, I didn't say 2 because that wasn't one of my numbers. This is what I used to estimate to figure out where order, which order they went into. So I still had to use the square root of 5 and I had to use 13 over 4. Let me show you another one. We have 2, negative 3 sevenths, negative 0.75, and square root of 8. I know that negative 3 out of 7 is about 1 half because 3 is half of 6 and so this is um, a little less than one half, but it's close to negative one half. And then the square root of eight, eight is close to nine, and the square root of nine is three. So I know that this is about three. So I'm just using that to order them. The smallest one up here, so I have negative one half, and I have negative point seventy five. So which one is smallest? Negative point seventy five, and then negative. 3 sevenths because that's about 1 half because remember I can't use the negative 1 half I have to use the negative 3 sevenths and then I have 2 and I have about 3 so 2 will come next and then square root of 8 all right now you have a U try all right, you try number 10. I want you to order these from least to greatest. 3, square root of 10, 3 fourths, and negative 1.5. So this one, square root of 10, you're going to have to estimate so you can figure out where it's going to go, and then you're going to put these in order from least to greatest. Remember, pause the video, and then restart the video when you're ready to hear the answer. This is close to the square root of 9, which is 3, so I know this is about 3, but I already have a 3. So is this going to be more than 3 or less than 3? And this is when that skill that we used the other day, this is actually going to be a little more than 3 because 10 is more than 9. So I know that this is going to be 3 point something, so we'll just say 3.1. Um, the smallest one up here is negative 1.5. And then I have 3 fourths, and then I'm going to have 3, and then I'm going to have the square root of 10. So I hope that's what your answer looked like when you ordered these from least to greatest. And I have one more for you. All right. This last one says, which list shows the numbers in increasing order? I've given you four options. A. B, C, or D. A, B, C, or D. So I want you to look at all the options and find the one that's in increasing order and be prepared because tomorrow we're going to go over the answer. So which list shows the numbers in increasing order? A, B, C, or D. Be prepared. 